Uh, um, I also um, graded the quiz that we took last time already, and I will pass it out uh, before we finish class, okay? Um, we will have the second quiz after we are done with uh, morphology, okay? So we need to talk about when we should have that, okay? So um, you will be responsible for phonology and morphology, okay? We are on morphology now. So which... want to have it, there are two options, either towards the end of October or the beginning of November. So whenever you are ready. We'll be done with morphology uh, by next week, okay? So we can have the quiz here last week of October or the first week of November. So it doesn't matter. Or here. So whenever. What about the fifth? Yes. So we'll have it on the fifth, OK? So we'll have the quiz on the 5th of November on phonology and morphology, okay? So coming back here, last time, we talked about morphemes, right? We say that morphemes are smallest meaningful unit, right? For a morpheme, it must be meaningful, right? But it doesn't have to be able to stand alone because we have bow morphemes and also free morphemes, right? So the bow morphemes cannot stand alone, but the free morpheme can stand alone, like that, right? And uh, for the bow morphemes, we have uh, prefix, the prefix, the infix, the circumfix, the suffix, and so on, okay? Like that. So that's what we talked about last time, right? And um, in English, the, uh, the bow morphemes could be derivational and also inflectional. That's what we talked about last time. Okay. There are only eight types of inflectional morphemes in English, right? <laughs> Three of them have to do with tense, two have to do with verbs, uh, aspect, and uh, two have to do with nouns, two have to do with adjectives like that. Okay. And uh, last time we were looking at examples of morphemes in English, right? We can reuse morphemes to make up words in English and in other languages. So uh, it's this handout that we looked at last time, okay? Um, I think we are on technology here, right? Technology. Because we already talked about fraternal, so we are on technology. So for technology, how many morphemes are there, right? There are only two morphemes here, techno and uh, logi, right? So logi is like knowledge, right? Logi is like knowledge, right? So techno, technique, like that, right? So from Greek, okay? 
uh, things that have to do with engine or things that have to do with machines like that. Okay. Um, next one, just a pose. We have two. We have juxta and pose. Because pose is a morpheme, you can see it in impose, repose, propose, like that. Pros is to put, to put down. Nokta, right? And juxta is next to. So next to and then put down. So when you juxtapose something, you put it down next to something else. Okay. Next one, renovate. How many morphemes are there? Three, right? We have re, re, right? Which means again, right? And then nov means new, right? You know, nov like nova, like that, new. And then eight is a verb morpheme, right? So uh, new, I'm sorry, again, new, and to make. So renovate is to make new again, right? Re is again, nov is new, eight is a verb suffix, means to make, okay? Um, exogamous, three morphemes, right? Exo means out, gam is to marry, and us is the adjective morphemes. Out, Mary, and then adjective. So exogamous is a person who marries out of his kinship, out of his culture, like that. <coughs> Governmental, uh, three morphemes. Govern. Govern means to control, to steer, and meant a noun morpheme, and all adjective morphemes. Men is a noun, tall is the adjective, and govern means to steer or to control. Okay. Finally, uh, for this column, pseudonym, we have two morphemes, right? Pseudo means fake or false, fake or false, and nim is name. Right? So false or fake and then name. So pseudonym is false name, right? The name that you use to, uh, in writing or... I'll do the second uh, column for today, okay? And then I'll have the rest for you to do as homework, okay? The second column, if you look at the first word, export table, right? Export, enable, right? We have three morphemes. X means out. Port is, uh, we look at that in the first one, transportation, right? Uh, carry or gate or entrance. And then able is the adjective morphemes. So three morphemes. Number two, at credit, we have two morphemes. Act and then credit. Act here is the same as add, mean two or two words, and credit is belief. So when you accredit something, you give your belief to it, right? You give your belief to that thing, right? Friendship, how many morphemes are there? Two, right? Friend and ship. But this ship here doesn't mean pe, right? Doesn't mean the boat, no, right? It is an, a noun suffix. The quality of being friend, like that, okay? Conclusion, how many morphemes are there? You know chan, right? Chan is a noun suffix. You know con, right? Con is continue, com, uh, con whatever you have, right? Contem. So con means together or all. Clued is to stop, to close. So together and then close 
and then noun. Uh, ION is a noun suffix. So to close together, meaning that's conclusion, right? Because when you do conclusion, to conclude, to conclude something, it means you bring everything together, right? Educate, la next one, we have E as one. This E is the same E as X. Same thing, but the X is gone, okay? But same. The meaning is the same. It means out, okay? Out. Um, Duke and aid, right? Duke is to lead. Out. And ATE is the verb form. So educate is to, to lead out of ignorance, to, to lead out of something that you don't know, right? So next one is conduct or conduct, if it's a noun. Uh, two morphemes, right? Con, which you already saw here. Con is together, right? And duck is same as, as duke here, to lead. Okay? Conduct is to lead together. Expedite, um, two, uh, three. X, you already saw, X is out of, right? Out of or away from, just like X here. And pet means foot, pal. Right. Foot. Eyed is the adjective suffix. So, you might think, well, what does it have to do with foot or feet, right? To expedite something is to to make it faster. Can you expedite the process? Expedite means to make it faster, so you kick it out of your foot or your feet. So that's, that's the origin of the word, basically, okay? Impede, impede is to, to make it slower, right? To, to stop it from happening, to prevent it from happening, to slow it down. So impede, you have im and then pede. Pede is the same as pet here, which means foot, right? And im is the same as in. So impede means into the foot, into the feet. Meaning when you have it into the feet, it slow down. So you cannot walk properly like that. So impede is to slow down or uh, to prevent it from happening. Um, pregnant, we have two morphemes. We have preg and nent. Okay? Nent is to, to be born. And preg is through. So born through. So somebody who is pregnant uh, will give birth to somebody through, through that person. Okay? Um, diagonal, diagonal. Uh, dia is through as well. Through and gone is corner and all is adjective. So there are three morphemes here. Dia, gone, and all, right? Dia is through, like diameter, like that. Through, like something goes through. And then gone is angle, and then all is the adjective. So diagonal is a line that you can you can start from one corner to the other corner, like that, diagonal. Android, Android is what you have in Samsung Galaxy, right? The iOS, uh, the, the, the system of operation. So, Andr, A-N-D-R, it means man. And Oi means like. So Android is like man, like human being, like meal. Okay. Pandemonium. You know that word pandemonium or pandemonic is an adjective, right? It means a state of uh, noise or a state of turmoil. So when I walked into a classroom in the beginning, that's a pandemonium where everybody <laughs> is speaking, right? So, so it comes from pan, which means all, 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 right? And then you know demon, like monster, right? And then im, which is the noun. 
right? So the state where we have all the demons, all the <laughs> monsters, right? So same thing. So you hear like, you know, roaring sounds and everything. Um, repellent. We have re, right? Re in this case is back. Re is back. Pell is um, to 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 go away. And lent as the adjective. So repellent is something that uh, drives something away and back. Okay, mosquito repellent, for example. Um, we have five more words um, for the second column. Morphology. We have morph and logy. Morph or morpho and logy. Okay? Morph means form, like form or shape. Logy is the study of. Okay? So the study of form or shape, that's morphology, right? We study form of words, shapes of words, and so on. Okay? So we have morph and, or morpho and logy. Philanthropy, uh, philanthropy. Um, in the next one, we have fill as one morpheme. Fill mean, means love. Fill as love. Anthro as in anthropology means human. And then y is a noun suffix. So the love of human being, the love of humanities. Okay. Philanthropy. This is not philosophy, right? Philosophy is the love of wisdom, love of knowledge. Um, petrify. Petrify is a verb that means to make into a stone, right? To make someone scared so much, right? So we have petri and phi. Petri is stone, and phi is to make. You know, petri, you see that in petroleum, like that, right? Stone. <coughs> Um, last two words, contemplation, we have con, together, temple means thinking, this is your temple, right, temple is right here, right, temple, the space between your forehead, like that, and then uh, eight, and then un, so con, tem, eight, and un, okay, so we have four more themes here. Last one, psychiatrist. We have uh, psych, and then aya, and then is. Psych is the mind. Aya, iatr is the healing, and then is is the person who. So a person who heals the mind, psychiatrist. When you look at these morphemes, you might feel that, well, they don't look like morphemes because they cannot stand alone as words, like I-A-T-R here, right? Um, you might not recognize that as a morpheme because you have never seen a word with that. But there are words like that, like this is a different um, uh, kind of feel of um, medicine, uh, uh, the, the field of medicine that heals your, your feet, like that. Diseases that are related to feet, like that. So you see the same morpheme here, okay? Or IST, is that a morpheme? Yes, because when you see IST, it means like an adjective or a noun, right? Um, sexist, like that, right? Extremist, like that, IST. And other morphemes might not be apparent to you, like maybe mm, eight here in contemplation. Uh, the reason why I separate a, a t, and un be, is because we have the verb contemplate, right? Contemplate is to think. So contemplate, a t e, is the verb suffix. But when we turn it into a noun by adding ion, it means it's another suffix. So we have two, two, two suffixes here, okay? two derivational suffix. But when you look at 
a similar word, examination. Okay, how many more films are there? We have examine, right? Examine, which is a verb. So that's one, right? Do we have the verb examinate in English? No, right? Because we already have the verb examine. So there is no such thing as examinate, okay? So ate is not, is not a suffix here. But we have examination, which is a noun suffix. So actually, we have only two, examine and, I'm sorry, not here, examine and Asian here, only two. But when you, when you look at contemplation, you have uh, contemplate, which is a verb, and then you turn that into a noun, contemplation. So this is a verb suffix, and this is a noun suffix. So you see the difference, right? Because we say that ate is a suffix here because we have that verb, contemplate. So it's a suffix that you add to the word contem contemplo like that. But for examine, you don't have the verb examinate, so there is no ate morpheme there, okay? So it depends on whether or not uh, you have that morpheme to start with in that language, okay? So um, before we move on to today's class, um, let's look at these uh, issues. What's wrong with the sentences? Number one, I'm very relaxed here. What's wrong with that? What is missing? The ed is missing from relax, right? And that ed is an inflectional suffix, remember? It's an inflectional suffix, right? So ed is missing here. And it's an inflectional suffix that, that contributes to the meaning. And in 2.2, some flowers are attracting to insects. What might be missing? What's, what might be wrong here? Maybe attractive, maybe attractive too. Or if you say attracting, it has to be without too. Attract, attract something, right? So maybe attractive. So the I-V-E, which is what we call the derivational suffix, right? Of an adjective. Or you can say some flowers attract insects like that. Number 2.3, what's wrong? Many people have strong beliefs. What's wrong there? The last word, believes, right? V-E-S is the verb suffix, right? But if you want to change it into a noun, you have to change it to F, right? F is a noun suffix there, right? <coughs> Same as number four, my culture is different from yours. In this case, CE is a noun suffix, right? It's a derivational suffix. To make it into an adjective, you have to change it to a T, right? My culture is different from yours, like that. And number five, I'm very boring by the lecture. Boring, right? So you have to change it to ED, right? which is an inflectional suffix, okay? So you, you see that the knowledge of uh, morpheme and the meaning of the morpheme is important, okay? Because or else uh, morphemes that are kind of small like ED or even the, uh, the sound F here um, contribute to meaning and it could uh, lead to mistakes, okay? So that's what we talked about last time morpheme and how to recognize morphemes. Today we'll look at um, another issue. We'll look at this. We'll look at morphemes and allomorphs. Okay? We'll look at morphemes and allomorphs. Remember when we talked about phonemes, 
we talked about allophones. So when we talk about morphemes, we'll talk about allomorphs too. Okay. So this is in the uh, second PowerPoint file that I sent out during the weekend. We know that morphemes are smallest meaningful unit, right? And morphemes could be free or morphemes could be bound, like that. Okay. Now the concept of allomorphs is parallel to the concept of allophones. Okay. So allo is other, morph is form. So allomorphs means other forms. Allomorphs are variants of the same morpheme. In other words, a morpheme could look a little bit different in different places, in different environments. The same morpheme may look a bit different in a different position, but they mean the same thing, okay? And they come from the same origin. So we call those different forms allomorphs of the same morpheme, okay? And um, depending on that position in a word, they may sound different. They may have different pronunciations, okay? Because they are other forms, right? Allo is other, okay? For example, the morpheme in, okay? The morpheme in, which means not. We are talking about the morpheme in, which means not, okay? In is pronounced in as in inapplicable, not, not being able to apply to something, right? Independent, inviolable, like that. So in, in all these places, okay? For that morpheme, which means not. But it's pronounced, or it has become written even, with IR or IL, okay? Uh, pronounced I as in irregular, irrational, irresponsible, irreversible, illegal, illiterate, and illogical. You see that they look just a bit different, in and ir, or il, like that. They mean the same, okay? And they are from the same origin. So we say that ir and il, ir and il, are allomorphs of the same morpheme in here, okay? Or in other places you have im, which means not again, but you see that, uh, you see that morpheme in immovable, improper, immature, impossible, immoral, and impolite, okay? So in different places, in different environments, in different positions, your morpheme could look different, could become um, just a little bit different from the original morphemes, okay? And that has to do with sound, uh, the sound patterns of English, right? So for example, in, the N, becomes M, right, M. When you see it occurs before M, P, M, P, M, and P. So M and P are bilabial, right? Bilabial sounds you made with two lips. So this means that the N, which is alveolar, uh, an alveolar sound, becomes a bilabial sound before another bilabial sound. So I can say that, I will use the uh, camera here, okay? So I can say that the morpheme, the morpheme in, right, becomes the morpheme or the allomorph im when it occurs before a bilabial, like that. Like that. And the same morpheme uh, becomes just I when it occurs before R or L. Oops. Like that. As you can see in irresponsible illogical, like that. Guess why? Why you have different forms in different places, right? In this place, in the place before bilabial, you have im. In the place before 
R and L, you have another form. So guess why? Because of the process that we study that is called assimilation, right? Remember, assimilation is a process when something becomes similar to, to the sound next to it. So N becomes M because, because it wants to imitate the bilabial right, of the sound next to it. And in this case, I think you can say the deletion, right? Because the N goes away before R and L. So in this case, you have deletion of the N. And then assimilation is there. Deletion is here. So even though we study morphology as a kind of a um, a field or a domain of linguistic in and of itself, it has connection to phonology, right? Because it can explain why once one morpheme changes its uh, look to another uh, morpheme like that, to, to the same morpheme but different allomorph like that. Okay? So we'll study that today. Um, and then what else do I have? Con is another example. Con means together or with, right? But it will change into different allomorphs depending on the position. Con changes to ko and pronounce ka as in collect, collide, collate, correct, collaborate, and so on. Uh, why is that? Same, same reason as the in. So the in is kind of deleted when you see the L and the R, just same as we, what we saw before, right? And then con changes to com before B, P, and P. Combat, compute, compare. Same thing, bilabial sound, okay? Assimilation. And then con elsewhere. In most cases, we will have con, okay? If not, the co and com. And then finally, you have co, pronounced co in coalesce, cohere, cohabit, coincide, coexist especially before vowel sounds. Coalesce, cohere, uh, H is a kind of a light sound, so it doesn't really have uh, the sound. So cohabit, uh, coincide, coexist, H or vowel, like that. You will have co pronounced co, rather than the schwa, okay? So again, we say that these different forms are allomorphs of the same morpheme, con. Because they mean the same thing, they are from the same, they are of the same origin, and because uh, they change in the way that you can predict. Remember, you can predict allophones, so you can predict allomorphs as well, okay? So like this, this is the rule, okay? And then uh, in English also, we have the plural morpheme, okay? The plural morpheme in English, when you want to make um, nouns in English into uh, plural nouns, okay? Um, when we write, we usually use S or ES or EN as in child, children, like that, right? Uh, ox, oxen, that's how we write. Or you change the form totally, foot to feed, goose to geese, like that. That's how we write. But in terms of pronunciation, there may be three or four main ways to do that. And we say that these are three allomorphs of the plural morpheme, okay? The first allomorph, what is that? <laughs> Sorry. Um, so S is one allomorph of the plural morpheme. When do you have S? For example, cats, parks, cops, wives. But um, Z, in dogs, rules, fades, dabs, cars, and wives, like that. Um, finally, you have either is or us. 
in churches, roses, hedges, slashes, garages, seizes, like that. So we'll look at when, do, when we have these different allomorphs, okay? We have S, when you see cats, parks, cops, and wives, you, you look at the sound before it, okay? The sound before it is a T, a K, a P, and an F. They are all voiceless sound, right? So you have an S, which is also a voiceless sound. So they match, right? The sound preceding, meaning the sound before the S, the sound before the plural morpheme is voiceless. So the morpheme, the plural morpheme itself has to be voiceless too, to match, right? That's assimilation, same thing. So in this case, it's S, which is voiceless. So you pronounce it cats, parks, cops, and wives, like that. On the other hand, if the sound before the plural is a voice sound, like g, uh, l, d, d, or b, or r, or v, they are all voice sound. So the plural cannot be voiceless because or else the voicing will not match, right? So you change the S to the voice version of the S, which is a Z. So you pronounce it like dogs, rules, fades, dabs, cars, or wives. So all of these are pronounced with a Z rather than an S, okay? Because the sound before the plural is a voice sound. G, L, D, B, and so on, okay? Finally, you pronounce the plural morpheme as is or us when we have church, this is a T hook, right? Rose, this is an S. Uh, hedge, uh, the affricate D, D and number three, slash hook. Uh, garage, number three, C is a Z. All of these are what we call um, I need to use the camera here. We call them sibilant sounds. You have never heard of that one, huh? Sibilant sounds. So sibilant sounds are sounds that, um, that consist of some fricatives and some uh, affricates. Fricatives and affricate. So you know affricates are like this and this, right? And fricative include S, Z, and then here and there, okay? A sibilant sound is uh, what people call a hissing, hissing sound. You know, when a snake hisses, right? Bam. Snake, right? Bam. So when a snake hisses, it's like you will hear the, the friction like that, including two affricates, because affricates are made of two fricatives, right? So when there is a sibilant sound in English, okay, and you add the plural morpheme to it, then you will not just insert, you will not just uh, put a Z or an S there. So imagine when we have the word, let's say, um, I don't know, church, like this. So we have church, right? Church. Now, what if we want to indicate that it's the plural? We add ES in writing. So if when we pronounce, we just insert a C or an S, it's hard to pronounce, right? Church, like this, right? Hard to pronounce uh, this sound and this sound together. So what we do is we insert a vowel in there. And a vowel is either a schwa or an e, right? Because they are light vowel. So we have a z afterwards, okay? So a Z is the plural morpheme, and we just insert the, the vowel here. So we have us or is, okay? So when we pronounce church, we have churches like that, okay?
In this case, you have um, the insertion of a sound. So coming back to uh, the slide here, again, to sum up, we have three allomorphs of the plural morpheme in English. S allomorph, when it follows the voiceless sound, as in uh, lips, whatever, right, parks. And it becomes a Z when it's after a voice sound, except the sibilants, right, in Africa. And it becomes an us uh, after the sibilant or affricate, and so on. Okay. And for other cases, you might have vowel change or no change at all. Like one deer, two deer, one fish, two fish is zero allomorph. Okay. So there are many uh, allomorphs of the plural morpheme in English, but the main ones are like the first three here. Okay. And the same rule goes for the present tense morpheme. When you add s to your verb, the present tense verb, third person, the same rule applies, OK? Like it will have the s a la more when it's after the voice, the sound, and so on, OK? So as an example, let me ask you this. Um, Oh, no, not that one. But because that one, when, when you do it, oh, well, that one is OK, too. So what are the allomorphs of these morphemes, of these plural and, oh, plural and present tense morphemes? Rose, what's the allomorph for that one? Well, you have to look at the sound before it, right? So what's the sound before it? Rho. Is that this sound, right? Is it voice or voiceless? All vowels are voice. So it has to be Z. So rose. Okay. Girls, voice or voiceless? Girl, like this. So the sound is voice, so it's a Z, right? Girls, like that, right? Goes, he goes, David goes, and so on. Goes is, again, voice, so goes. And kiss, it ends with a hissing sound, sibilant, right? So you have to insert a vowel, either e or schwa, and then z, right? So kisses, right? Mm, one more, uh, stops. So this one is stop. The sound P is voice or voiceless? Voiceless, so it becomes S. So which one is more common? The common allomorph, the, the one that appears or the one that occurs in many, in, in more cases. So it seems that the Z is the, the, alum, the common allomorph, right? And the C will become S like that when the sound before it is uh, voiceless like that. And you insert something, you insert a vowel if it's uh, a sibilant sound or an affricate sound. But it's still a Z. OK? Right? So that's the plural and the present tense morpheme in English with all the allomorphs. OK? But in the case of uh, foot to feet, so the, alum, uh, the, the plural morpheme here is just the, the vowel e, right, from u, which is irregular, 
right? We call that irregular form. So that's the plural and the present tense. For the past tense, oops, for the past tense, um, there are also elements of the past tense morpheme in English. Uh, when we write, we usually add the D or the ED for regular verbs. But for irregular verbs, we just change them, right? Eat, ate, like that. So uh, for the regular verbs, at least, we have three forms. T, T D, and it or ud, okay? As the allomorphs of the past tense. Um, again, the kind of the logic is the same. You have a T allomorph if the sound before it is voiceless. Kick, for example, the K is the last sound. Kick, right? So K is voiceless, so you add the T. Kicked, like that, kicked. Pushed, voiceless, so you add the T. Stop is the voiceless, so you add the T. Stopped, okay? And the past tense element will be a D when it's a voice sound. So begged, loved, wowed, called, poured, uh, moved, opened, and so on. And then when you, uh, when you have a T or a D ending, this is a little bit different from the plural and the present tense. E, uh, it and ed when you have the T or the D ending. Uh, wanted, needed, and padded, like that, okay? So the rules are like this. The D becomes a T when it's after the voiceless sound. The D becomes the D when it's after the voice sound. And the D becomes the I, uh, it or ed after the T or the D, okay? Again, you have to uh, insert a vowel just for ease of pronunciation, making the pronunciation easy. Because when you, when, when you have a D or a T, and when you want to add a D after it, you cannot do that easily, right? So one, D, D, like that, is difficult. So you insert the vowel, the light vowel there, okay? Um, so sometimes verbs don't change the form, hit, 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 like that. Uh, they, we call that that's a zero allomorph, okay? So as examples, um, I'll ask you how to pronounce these uh, morphemes then, uh, allomorphs. How do we pronounce these uh, allomorphs, the past tense allomorph? Died. Is that a T or a D? Die. Like that, right? So when you want to add the past tense, you add the D, right? Died. Because the vowel here is voice, so you add the voice sound. Slap is slapped or slapped, slapped. So because we have slap like this, so we add the T, right? Because P is voiceless, so we add the T. Uh, dream, some people pronounce it dreamt, right? But uh, that verb is also a regular verb. So dream like this, M, so we look at M, M is a voice, so add the D, dreamed, right? And then live, live like this, right? So we can add, V is voice, so we add lived, same as loved, right? So love, oops, loved, like that. So you can see that they both match in terms of the voicing. Voice, voice, 
voiceless, voiceless, voice, 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 voice like that, match. So when we think about the plural morpheme, uh, I'm sorry, the past tense morpheme, when we think about the past tense morpheme or the past tense allomorphs, uh, to be uh, specific, <laughs> we have only maybe two or three. It's either T or D, plus sometimes plus the, um, if you have want, want like this, so you have wanted or wanted. So usually it's the D. Right, usually it's the D. Sometimes you insert a vowel, and sometimes it's a T. But usually it's a D. Okay. So in English, when we want to indicate the past tense, we add the the uh, the alveolar suffix T or D. Okay. Mostly the D, and then it will become a T in the voiceless condition. Okay. So that's uh, what I want to talk about today, and. Uh, before, um, so please keep this. If you don't bring it on Monday, I'll charge you Chon Won per copy because we have to save trees, right? Just like Korean supermarkets charge me for the shopping bag. Every time if I don't bring my shopping bag. So we'll look at examples. We'll look at the first example. Um, there are uh, examples of allophones and, uh, I'm sorry, morph, morph and allomorphs. So we'll look at the first example today and then we'll do the rest on Monday, okay? So on the, um, on the first page, you see the first example. Um, I give you a list of words, all of the, all of the words end in ER, 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 okay? Um, my question, my first question is, is ER, ER a morpheme in all of the words or not? And if it is, is it the same morpheme in all of the words or not? Okay? So let's look at the words. The words are here. You see, starting with taller, taller, river, shorter, farmer, either, smarter, collar, pinner, finger, uh, sweeter, other, never, teacher, and cover. Which ER is a morpheme and which one is not. So, so start with these two questions. Which ER, again, the ER has to have a meaning, right? When it's a morpheme. But it will not have a meaning if it's not a morpheme. So think about this for maybe two minutes. And you can say uh, which ER is not a morpheme. You can list those words here. Okay. It must have a meaning if it's to be a morpheme, okay?
Okay, so taller is the R morphine there? Yes, right, because it means like um, a higher degree of adjective. So yes, so this one is a morpheme ER. River, ER morpheme? No, because we, we, we have the word rive, but it means to break apart. But it doesn't have the meaning of river as the current like that, right? So ER here is not a morpheme. So which ER is not a morpheme? River, OK? Because ER is part of that word. It's built in that word without having a specific meaning in that word, OK? Shorter, yes, right? ER means the adjective of the uh, lower degree in this case, OK? Farmer, yes, farm and er, a person who does farming, right? So yes. So only river up to this point. Either or either. No, right? Because we don't have the word eith or eth like that. So no. Okay. Smarter, yes. The comparative degree of adjective. So only two up to this point, liver and either. Caller, yes, a person who calls. Painter, yes, a person who paints. Finger, no, we don't have the, 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 the noun fing, right, and er. So finger, no. Sweeter, yes, uh, comparative adjective degree. Other, no, right, we don't have the word oath. Oath. Oath, O-A-T-H we have, but O-T-H we don't have. Uh, never, we don't have nev, right? So no. Teacher, yes. Teach and er, right? Cover, no, because we don't have cov. So only river, either, um, other, uh, finger, and cover are not a morpheme, OK? And how many ER morphemes are there? So we see perhaps two, right? The comparative adjective ones, like shorters, smarters, sweeters, like that. And also the person who, right? As in farmer, um, caller, and so on. Okay, teacher, and so on. So two. And they are not the same morpheme, okay? Two, so person. <coughs> ER and um, the comparative degree. So river, either, other, never, cover, finger. Can you do the same with the words in the second one? Now we're looking at EN. We're looking at EN rather than rather than the ER. So we have soften or soften. Some people might pronounce it like that. Broken and taken, even, whiten, uh, eaten, sudden, widen, harden, open, deepen, and oven. So which of these uh, ENs might be a morpheme and which of these might not be a morpheme? So I'll give you one minute. So starting out with soften, soften, E-N is the morpheme, right? It means to make softer, right? To make soft. So E-N is a morpheme there because we have the word soft and then N as a verb. Soft is an adjective, right? Broken, what about broken? Is it a morpheme? Yes, we have break, 
uh, broke and then broken, right? So en here is another morpheme. And then taken, yes, take, took, and taken, right? From take plus en. Even, no. So no, oh, yes. Um, whiten, yes, white and in, right? Often, no. Eaten, yes. Sudden, no. We don't have sud, right? Widen, yes. Harden, yes. Open, no. We don't have ope. Uh, deepen, yes. Oven, no. Okay? So, which morphemes mean which, right? So, we have en. One is that you find in soften, whiten, widen, harden, deepen. So that en means to make. So soften, to make soft. Right? It's a verb suffix also. OK? So whiten means to make white, and it becomes a verb, noun, white. Now the noun white becomes a verb to whiten, like that. Uh, so when you have the noun or adjective black, you want to make it into a verb, you can say blacken, too, right? Um, the other en that we see here um, is what we can call, I think, past participle morpheme. as in take, took, taken. So this en is what we call the past participle, right? And it occurs in the passive voice. It occurs in the perfect aspect, and so on. So that's uh, what we will uh, leave off uh, for today. And on the second page and on the third page, uh, you will see kind of the same thing. On the second page, you'll see the prefix un in English, OK? The morpheme un in English. And we will see how this may have different allomorphs in different environments. So comfortable. We, a lot of people pronounce it like when, when we add un, which means not, OK? People pronounce it like uncomfortable, un, with the, with the tail in. But pleasant, unpleasant, that's unpleasant, unpleasant, like that. Intelligent, unintelligent. Natural, unnatural, right? So the n is missing, because n here is from the word natural. So the, the n in un is gone. Like that. And uh, believable becomes unbelievable. That's unbelievable, like that. So, un becomes um here. So, we'll look at, uh, on Monday, we'll look at why the un uh, becomes un or, or the n is deleted or it becomes um like this. Okay? We'll look at many cases like that. But you cannot forget phonology. Okay? So we'll come back here on Monday, and we will finish off, uh, hopefully, uh, uh, no, morphology.